If you're coming here for my last video on how to reduce the cost of college, then welcome back and here's some more strategies. The total cost of college is a complicated figure based upon multiple decisions that individual students will make. So a strategy that may save one student thousands of dollars may save another student tens of thousands of dollars. So it's really the combination of all of the strategies that will help reduce the cost to make it as low as possible, giving you the highest likelihood of being able to go to college for free. So here are even more strategies. Let's begin. Another thing that people often don't think about until they're already at college is the meal plan. So again, if you're living on campus, you'll typically be required to have a meal plan. And usually there are tiers of meal plans. Now, some schools offer different styles of meal plans, kind of like a, an unlimited plan, or a, you know, if you have sort of a cafeteria that you have to eat a, a card and you swipe in to go into the cafeteria, then there's a certain number of swipes. It's not based on meals or whatever. Some schools, they do it based on meals, and it's like you can sign up to get breakfasts, or you can sign up to get lunches, or dinners, or all three, or whatever. So the types of meal plans are gonna vary. Again, it might not be exactly like what we discussed here, but just understand that there's usually different levels of meal plans, and you often don't need the highest level. And we'll get into the details here in just a second. Let's say your school offers it by meal. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Well, typically, as a college student, you're probably not waking up every single morning and going to the campus cafeteria for breakfast. You may, you may not. But if you don't, and you know you don't, and you're just gonna eat Pop-Tarts or cereal in your dorm room, then don't pay for a breakfast at the cafeteria. Only buy a meal plan that includes lunches and dinners. You can choose how many days. So whether you want a meal plan for three days or five days or, or all seven days or whatever, taking that into account as well, recognizing that, you know, I might want, say once or twice a week, to go out to eat with my friends for lunch or dinner. Well, then again, you're not gonna wanna pay for a lunch on campus and then also pay for lunch off campus. So picking a meal plan that, that just understand what you plan to do as far as eating and take that into account and buy the cheapest meal plan possible that fits your needs. Obviously, you don't wanna starve in school, but just make sure that you're choosing the most affordable, appropriate meal plan for how you choose to eat while you're at school. And that applies to the swipe category as well. Again, they might say you can pay for 20 swipes a month or 70 swipes a month or 150 swipes a month. Well, again, just think about it. You know, how many meals am I typically gonna go to the cafeteria for in a day? And how many, you know, days a week? Well, add that up, get a number, and then buy, buy the meal plan based on that number. Another thing to consider when living on campus is the type of dorm that you choose to live in. What do I mean by type of dorm? Some colleges offer different buildings, and different buildings might have different amenities, and therefore you might pay more or less money depending on which dorm building you choose to live in. And some schools even have sort of like apartments as dorms that you can live in versus a dorm room style. And so all these different options come with different price tags. You also can usually choose, do you wanna be a single, like pay for, to have an, your private room or have a roommate? And when I went to college at TCU, we actually had the opportunity as a freshman to live in what they called a triple. A triple was basically a dorm room sized for two people that they shoved more furniture in and they called it a triple. But you got to pay less money and I had two roommates that year instead of just one. So, uh, you know, it was kind of nice socially to make new friends. So just understand that there are different levels even within the same school. Room and board is not strictly a, oh, you're going, you're going to live on campus, here's a dorm. They're all the same price. Not necessarily. So take into consideration which dorm may be a more affordable option even if you have to live on campus. Now consider if you were able to go to college and get your degree without actually having to take all the classes necessary to get the degree. Wouldn't that be nice? Well, it's possible by testing out of classes. Now for most high schools, you might be familiar with IB programs or AP programs. And those programs are designed to help you take classes and coursework in high school to prepare you to take a test to test out of a college course. But there are ways to test out of college classes in addition to those options. Generally, these are referred to as credit by examination. And the options you have are AP testing, AB programs, CLEP tests, UXL, DSST, and college-specific prior learning assessments or college-specific challenge testing processes. Now, not every school is gonna offer every one of these options, but just understand that there are more ways to pay for college by testing out of classes than just AP and IB. And it's important to consider that not every class will have the option to test out, and most colleges and universities have a limit to the number of credits that you can have by testing in order to still graduate. So that limit might be 30 or you know 60 or 20, whatever, but just know that you can't basically get your entire degree from a college by taking a test and testing out of every single class and never actually having to attend any classes. 
uh, because number one, they wouldn't get their money that way. And number two is that they wouldn't really be able to put their name on that degree because you didn't actually take any classes at their school. So it doesn't work that way. You can't take every class, but if you can cut out, say a semester's worth of classes or even a year's worth of classes through testing, then that's gonna save you a ton of money. Specifically, a CLEP test is $89. So if you go to a school that has, you know, $1,000 per credit hour and you're taking a three credit hour class, that class is gonna cost you three grand to take at the school. But if you can test out of it, you just spent $89, way better. And it's gonna save you time. Like I said, if you can test out of a semester or a year's worth of classes, not only is it gonna reduce how much you have to pay, but it's gonna save you time. You could graduate a semester or a year earlier than everybody else because you didn't have to take those classes. So it's not just about money, it's also about time. And the money you're gonna save is more than just tuition. Because yes, you might have saved a semester's worth of tuition and fees because you don't have to go to those classes, but you also saved a semester's worth of living expenses, room and board, books. So you, you save on all college expenses by graduating early. And beyond that, you're just gonna enjoy the college experience more if you're not having to take a bunch of classes that you didn't really wanna take in the first place. A lot of times the, the class that you're gonna test out of are gonna be your general education courses. So you typically are taking gen ed courses and classes that you have to take that have nothing to do with the degree program you really want to learn about. And so it's just a requirement, like taking a history class if you're a science major. You know, you don't really necessarily wanna take the history class. Now, some people do. I'm not saying that you're not interested in things. I'm just saying, you know, English classes are required classes regardless of whether your degree is in English. Math classes are usually required classes whether or not your degree is actually in math or has anything to do with math. So these are classes that you have to take. You might not want to take them. So if you can test out of them, even better. So what are some of the specifics about these different ways to test out of classes in college? Well, let's start with the AP and the IB. So these are tests that you're gonna take after completing a course while you're in high school. With AP testing, you usually take a more challenging version of the same class you would have had to take anyways, which qualifies you to take a test for the AP test to not have to take that subject matter when you get to college. I was able to take advantage of AP testing and test out of, uh, I think, an English class and two semesters of calculus. And so that actually allowed me to save about $9,000 because at the time, I think the tuition rate for my school was like $1,000 per credit hour. And so, you know, I saved a ton of money just by taking these tests through AP classes in high school. I know sometimes it's hard to see the tangible benefit when you're just in the class and you're having to come home and do a reading assignment or do a, you know, homework or something. And you're just like, oh, why am I doing all this? But when you get to see real dollars and cents on the back end, it, you're really glad that you did it, trust me. Now, IB programs work similarly with AP tests where you are taking a test to test out. There's a few differences. One difference is that there's two levels for IB. There's a standard level and a higher level. Many colleges will only accept credit if it's the higher level IB class. And IB classes usually have a more strict criteria for what the teachers have to grade, including an oral presentation. This is part of what's referred to as the internal assessment. And then there's the external assessment, which is the IB test. The actual tests of AP and IB are a little bit different too. AP tests are usually more knowledge-based and therefore more multiple choice. IB tends to focus more on application, so there's more short answers. Now, part of choosing which direction to go, AP or IB, is whether your school offers it. When I was in school, I had AP testing as an option. IB wasn't even offered at my school, so obviously that kind of made the choice for me. But if you are in a position where you have the choice to do either one, then just look into the specific ways the programs are different. Again, AP tests more knowledge-based, IB tests more application-based. Think about those kinds of things when you decide which direction to go. And cost might also be a factor, but they're pretty close. I mean, a typical AP test is about $94, while an IB test is like $119. But some schools offer a fee waiver, so depending on your high school and your financial situation, check and see if they'll offer financial assistance, including a fee waiver to take the AP or the IB test. Now, CLEP testing. CLEP stands for the College Level Examination Program, and it's offered by College Board, which is the same organization that does the SATs and the PSATs, and even hosts the AP test. So CLEP test is just another part of the ecosystem of testing that they provide. There are 34 different CLEP tests and subjects that you can choose to test out of. I'm not gonna get into all the test subjects here, but you can see the whole list by going to clep.collegeboard.com. Org, and you can get more information there. But just know that CLEP tests are another great way to pay less for a college education if your college accepts them, and that's because the price tag is only $89. This is significantly lower than the typical cost of education, even community college. Now there was another thing called the UXCEL. This is through the Excelsior College. You're basically taking an Excelsior College exam to get credit at Excelsior College, 
but you can transfer that to other schools using the UXL process. So it's similar to the CLEP test in that you're gonna take a test so that you don't have to take the course and you're gonna get a college credit for doing that. A caution on this is just that you have to make sure ahead of time that the college you plan to attend will accept UXL credits. So always make sure that your university will accept the credits before you take the test. Now there's something called DANTES, which is the Defense Activity Non-Traditional Education Support. And they offer a type of test to test out called the Dante Subject Standardized Test, or the DSST. Now, I'll be honest, I didn't know about this one until I was doing research for this video. But Dante's provides free education programs for US military members. DSST has 38 tests that you can take. Again, just make sure that the college you want to attend accepts them before you take the test. And then there are, of course, college-specific testing opportunities to test out of class. So while your school might not accept the UXL or the CLEP test to test out, they might have their own internal internal program that still allows you to test out of classes. You just have to do it through the school. Again, in this instance, you just want to do your homework and make sure that you are following the rules for your specific school, because again, they may only allow a certain number of credit hours to be tested out of or things like that. So you just want to make sure you're following the rules before you sign up and take any additional tests. And because the costs are going to vary from each school and for each specific circumstances that you're in, because your net price of college might already be lower, you might even have a full ride to that school already. So, you know, taking that into account, maybe testing out might not make sense or might not be the best option. And you have to know how testing out of a class might affect your enrollment status. Sometimes you might take a test and it might test you out of two credits instead of all three or all four, something to that effect. And so then if you had to take sort of the second half of class, something to that effect, then you might actually drop below your 12 credit hours required to be a full-time student. And by doing that, now you might lose some funding through scholarships and things that require you to be a full-time student. So just make sure that your specific situation is actually going to work out better by testing out and that you're actually gonna save money when you take a test. So the takeaway from this section is just understand that you do have options when it comes to paying for college, that you can test out of courses, either that's through CLEP, through AP, IB, or a test specifically at your university. Just make sure that they accept the credits you plan to take and make sure that, they, that you're below that limit if they have an upper limit for how many credits you can test out of. But by doing this, you can save hundreds or thousands of dollars per course by choosing to test. And this will help you with another strategy of trying to graduate in three years. Now, for more details on how you can accomplish that strategy, you're gonna to wanna to click on this video. Or again, you can click on my playlist here for all the videos I have on how to pay for college. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.